Well, good morning. Now, what I would like to think about this morning is the question of creativity and what is involved in it, and the life of the spirit, as we can have a perspective of that uh, over the past in history, and as the experience of creativity and spirit may be understood in our own time, and to consider then some of the practicalities of these questions. I think I want to start by beginning my dialogue with Joseph Campbell and referring back to the experience that he described to us and his metaphor when he was giving his speech to the young men at the private school, I assume it was, and when he had his vision of uh, their consciousness as so many bulbs. And I couldn't help trying to envision him there and seeing all the uh, young men probably in their uh, blazers. And I was thinking, in the first place, I was thinking if somebody came uh, from the great civilization of the Incas or from Africa or from China, and he came there and he would say, but they make them all looking alike, like they had a, they make, like they make, it, they make their little boys the same way they make their cookies, and they punch them out. But then I thought, but it would really take the parents. The parents would know the difference. And then I was thinking of the metaphor of taking those bulbs out and just screwing one bulb out and screwing another bulb in. That metaphor would hold, accepting from the point of view of the parents and from the point of view of the little boys, because that would involve their consciousness and even more specifically, that would involve their particular life. And that seems to me to be the heart of the matter, the heart of the question for of creativity and of spirit in our time of history. That is the question for us of individual persons. And that has to do, of course, with the way that Western civilization has developed with its emphasis on individuality, and sometimes that has come to seem, especially in the context of some of the more recent interests in religion, it, that has come to seem as a weakness, as a limitation in Western life. But I think if we consider in the first place what would be involved for those little boys who considered their consciousness and considered the development of their life, first would be the development of their life, their person, personal destiny, their fortune, their faith. That would be subjective to them. That would be subjective to them, but it would be the reality of their life. But then it seems to me to be important to add this, that when persons work at the development of their lives, that is not just a subjective activity. That's not just the solipsism of looking for a way of success, as it may be in one way to say it, but the development of person's consciousness, their capacity of creativity and the quality of spirit of the individual, in addition to what it does for the individual, that's something that is a contribution to the society, that is depending upon how many young men and eventually many young women develop, the quality of the culture changes. So the development of creative capacity in person and the development of spirit is of great importance for the nature of the life of a culture and of a civilization. And I have this further feeling. There's an intuition, I think of it as an intuition and a concept that Teilhard de Chardin had that many of you may be familiar with, his idea of the noosphere. You know, his sense that the process of evolution is moving, and it moves from the level of stones and then vegetation and then the animal kingdom, and eventually it reaches the level of what he calls hominization, that is, when human beings emerge. And then his sense is that out of the experiences that come when human beings have the kind of deep inner contact 
that is specifically the nature of the life of human beings, that something is added to the cosmos, that these experiences become like little increments, little little events that, that gradually build what he calls the noosphere, which is a kind of envelope surrounding the universe as it now is, but it's the dimension of spirit, and it's Teilhard's sense that spirit builds, spirit accumulates, and becomes a further level, it's extending evolution, and it becomes a further level of life. And it does seem to me, then, that this perspective, this sense that we live our personal life, we live our subjective destinies with our good fortune or, or painful fortune, but in the course of doing that, depending upon what our experience is, we add to the culture, we form our culture, and we add to the process of evolution, which at that point becomes something more than what was originally called natural evolution, but does become spiritual evolution. And I take that, I feel that, as the framework for all the personal work that one would do. That one is building oneself, in the way Teilhard said, building the earth. One is building oneself, one's life. One is building the culture for history. And one is building the cosmos by extending the process of evolution to further levels. Now, in that, what has been important, seen important to me, is that the basic building block for strengthening a civilization and the basic building block for enlarging the process of evolution is the human person, is the life and the experiences of individuals, and that there is no way of going past that, and that in all the philosophies that have negated the importance of individuality, yet this fact remains that we build civilization through the lives of persons, and we extend evolution through the lives of persons. That leads me to the question of how we can understand creativity, what it has been, what has been involved in it, and what it would be now. I think there's this, maybe perhaps just in a, a, a brief statement of what we would understand creativity to be. Maybe in just the simplest sense that creativity takes place when something new is brought into existence. When in a certain way of thinking of it, we have been creative in our life, if we may feel that leaving this life, some new things are in existence that were not in existence before and that would not have been in existence were it not for the way that we have lived our lives and the things that we have done in the course of those lives. That creativity involves bringing something new into existence, maybe something meaningful also, but that's a, that's a subjective thing that has many, many aspects. But if we think back into earlier periods of history or into other cultures, for the question of what is involved in bringing something new into the world in the course of a person's life, I think the basic thing we see is that most times in history, people have lived their lives within the framework of the culture, that the traditions by which the culture lived determined what the person would do in medieval culture, depending on what your parents were, the station in life, that would determine the work you would do, how you would earn your living. It would determine who you would marry. It would determine what your religious practices would be. In other cultures, depending on the structure of the culture or the tribe, that would determine whether you spent your time as a hunter or as a or fishing, or whether you would uh, be engaged in uh, uh, priestly practices, or, or what you would be doing. But what you would be doing would pretty much be determined 
by the station in life into which you were born, and also would be determined by the structure of the culture, by the patterns of belief, of living in a traditional culture, so that without our going into any great detail about the relation of the culture and the individual in those traditional times, in those times when the tradition and the structure of the culture determine the life, I think we can make this basic statement, that in those times, the degree of creativity in an individual life is quite limited, and that the persons, the only persons, or the main persons, who are creative in the time of history when the culture is predominantly tradition, traditional, the only persons who are created then are persons who rise up like mountain peaks, that are really great individuals. And that's why it is, it seems to me, that when we look back over the past in history, we see really a relatively small number of people whose names and the memory of whose lives speak to us. Because it's only certain people, only very strong, very individual people, who can have the capacity, the capacity is primary, and the courage, the strength, with which to set their lives over against traditions and patterns of tradition that are established so that they would be the, the great writers. Only the great writers could make it. Only the great leaders, the po great political leaders, can make it as not being just figures who are the inevitable leaders, because every culture needs its leaders, but the figures who stand out 